Hi, Mystery Recapped here. Today, I'm going to explain a South Korean fantasy comedy film called The Dude in Me. Spoilers ahead, watch out, and take care. The protagonist of the film is the heir of the Hanho group and a well-known elite gangster, Pan Su. In the beginning, we are introduced to his lavish lifestyle and loveless marriage to Seo Yan. Pan Su only married her because her father, Mr. Han, is the president of the Hanho group and an influential man. Seo Yan is rich and spoiled and hasn't worked a day in her life, but she still feels entitled to her husband and father's money. She complains that her father is refusing to buy her a gallery that she really wanted. Pan Su ignores her ridiculous demand and goes on about his day. In the office, he is informed of a carpenter who is refusing to evacuate his shop that needs to be destroyed for Pan Su's next project. To get the job done, he invites his right-hand man, Mr. Bang, and asks him to get the carpenter out one way or another. Meanwhile, the carpenter, John Key, is nervous, knowing that the thugs will use force to make him evacuate. His fears become reality when Mr. Bang comes to his shop and threatens to cut his arm off if he doesn't sign the papers. With no way out, the poor man gives up his shop. The next day, Pansu decides to go to an old ramen shop that used to be his favorite restaurant back in the day. Alongside him, a high school student, Dong Hyun, is also enjoying the noodles. Dong Hyun tries to pay, but finds out that he forgot his wallet. When he apologizes to the restaurant's owner, she forgives him and claims that Pansu will pay for him out of generosity. The gangster is outraged by the bold lady, but doesn't mind paying for the kid even though he ate four bowls of ramen. The shop owner promises to give him a special gift in return for his generosity. A while later, Dong Hyun is on the edge of a two-story building trying to retrieve a shoe from a pole. As he reaches for it, he loses his balance and falls on top of Pan Su, who happens to be standing right below. When Pan Su opens his eyes again, he finds himself on a hospital bed. A young nurse calls him a student and talks to him informally. Confused, he walks outside and is horrified to see his body lying down on another hospital bed. Before he can react, the carpenter John Key launches at him, calling him his son. A confused Pan Su looks into the mirror to finally realize that he has swapped bodies with the shy kid from earlier. It's Freaky Friday for gangsters. Coincidentally, Jong Ki, who he threatened to kill the previous day, is Dong Hyun's father. When Pan Su acts differently than his normal self and refuses to recognize his father, the doctor declares that he has something called retrograde amnesia. Pan Su then recollects what the restaurant owner told him earlier and runs to meet her again. However, by then, the restaurant is being closed and the woman is nowhere to be found. In the following scene, we are introduced to Pan Su's business rival, Mr. Yang. Yang hears the news about him being in a coma. He is over the moon and plans to take advantage of the situation to kill Pan Su. At night, Pan Su returns home to his wife, who thinks he is an intruder. He tries to explain the situation, but Seo Yan calls the security and makes them kick him out of the house. Kind of amazing that he thought that Karen was going to hear him out. He is then taken to the police station and accused of trespassing. His poor father is distressed because of his outrageous behavior. Thankfully for him, the police let Pan Su free without much fuss because he's underaged. In the following scene, Pan Su tries to wake up his body that's in a coma. Desperate to get his body back, he jumps on top of Dong Hyun. Just then, his right-hand man, Mr. Bang, enters the room and stops him. Pan Su tries to make him understand that it's him trapped in a kid's body, but Bang thinks he is bluffing and kicks him out of the room. After being disrespected by his own employees, Pan Su returns to Dong Hyun's home with his father. The place is too small for his liking, but he has a hundred more problems to tend to. Jong Ki cooks him a plethora of dishes to accelerate his recovery. Initially, Pan Su says that he doesn't eat like a glutton, but a while later, the plates are all empty. He realizes that even though his mind is different, he is still in Dong Hyun's body, which affects his appetite. Jong Ki believes that Dong Hyun was bullied into walking on the edge of the building, which resulted in the accident. The next day, he goes to meet his school principal. When asked about the bullying, the principal claims that nothing of such sort happens in their school. Pan Su sees through his lies and is determined to find out what exactly caused the accident. As soon as he enters the classroom, a group of boys make fun of him and flip him off. Pan Su instantly registers that Dong Hyun was an introvert who is made fun of all the time. 
he should get Mr. Bang to cut those dicks' arms off. During the lunch break, a girl named Hyun Jung is also being bullied by popular kids. They mix her food with a cold drink and make her eat it. Eventually, they dump the entire plate of food on her. Pansu calls them out for it, angering the leader of the bullies, Tai Wook. Before Pansu can showcase his fighting skills, the teachers arrive and Tai Wook has to retreat. After school, the bullies stop Pansu again and try to intimidate him. In turn, he slaps them all with zero effort and simply walks away. Later that day, the bullies trouble another guy in the washroom. Just then, Pansu comes out from a stall and helps the poor guy. He also takes Tai Wook's phone away, promising to return it the next day. The bullies are so scared that they let him do whatever he wants. While going through the phone, Pansu sees a video of the day the accident took place. It is revealed that Tai Wook and his group had bullied Dong Hyun into getting on the edge. They are the reason he fell off the building and their bodies exchanged. The next day, Tai Wook's leader is beating him up for giving Pansu his phone that has the video on it. Pansu arrives and kindly asks the leader to never trouble anyone again, blackmailing him with the video. The bully has no choice but to agree. Somewhere else, Pansu's wife, Seo Yan, takes advantage of her husband's comatose state and starts dating younger men. Pansu's rival, Mr. Yang, gets a hint of this and blackmails her into joining hands with him. The two together plan Pansu's downfall. That night, Pansu goes to the hospital and meets Mr. Bang. He tells Bang everything about his past and proves his identity. The following day, Hyun Jung bumps into him and drops her stuffed toy. He follows her to return it and happens to meet her mother, Mi Sun. To Pansu's utter shock, Mi Sun is his first love, who he left to marry his current wife. He calls her by her first name, which surprises Mi Sun. After Pansu runs away, he remembers how he and Mi Sun used to spend their days together when they were young. When he meets Hyun Jung the next time, he takes some of her hair to use for a parental DNA test. The results come out and Pansu finds out that Hyun Jung is actually his daughter. Following that, he goes to meet Mi Sun and subtly asks her about her life. She tells him that she raised Hyun Jung all on her own because her father was not a good person. Pansu feels awful that the people he loves had to go through so much because of his absence. Somewhere else, his current wife, Seo Yan, goes to her father with fake reports of Pansu misusing the company's money. In reality, she was told to do so by Pansu's rival, Mr. Yang. Her father believes her and starts to consider removing Pansu from the company once he gets out of the coma. Somewhere else, Pansu goes to a gym to lose weight and to get closer to his daughter, who is learning self-defense in the same institution. I don't like the way this is going. Initially, she is skeptical and is about to leave, but Mr. Bang pretends to be the instructor and convinces her to stay. Starting that day, the father and daughter train together and begin getting along well. Eventually, Pansu loses weight and gets fit. The girls in the school, including the bullies, are surprised by his new persona. During the lunch break, Hyun Jung's bullies stop her again, but this time, she teaches them a lesson and defends herself efficiently. The other students are stunned to witness her newfound confidence. That evening, Pansu goes to Mi Sun's restaurant again. While talking, she mentions her former lover, who she wishes she could have killed. Pansu realizes she is talking about him and chokes on his water. Mi Sun is helping a perverted customer when he touches her inappropriately. An enraged Pansu asks her to go inside and fights the perverts. Mi Sun suddenly stops him, inquiring why he's acting out of character. Pansu sits her down and finally tells her everything about switching bodies with Dong Hyun. Initially, she doesn't believe him, but Pansu challenges her to ask him anything that he would know. When he answers all the questions correctly, Mi Sun is in shock. Still, she asks him to go away from their lives as he did all those years ago. A flashback shows us young Mi Sun and Pansu meeting for the first time. He rudely informed her that he was getting married to his boss's daughter and asked Mi Sun to forget him. The following day, a popular guy from the school named Min Ho invites Hyun Jung to his birthday party. Hyun Jung, who has never been called to a party, excitedly agrees to come, unaware of Min Ho's actual intentions. After that, Pansu and Mi Sun meet at a restaurant where she bluntly tells him that she doesn't want him in their lives. He tries to win her over and kisses her in front of everyone. The people around them are shocked because to them, Pansu is half of Mi Sun's age. She pushes him away and slaps him in the face. Still, Pansu doesn't stop and follows her outside. Suddenly, he gets a call from his friend who informs him about the bully's plan to trouble Hyun Jung at the party. 
Pansu quickly rushes to the party and arrives there to see Minho pouring a bowl of alcohol on Hyun Jung. Angered to see his daughter crying, he fights all of the guys who are surrounding her. The girls who witness the fight fall head over heels for him. Hyun Jung also takes a stand against Min Ho and kicks him into the pool. After that, the father and daughter leave. The following day, Mr. Bang informs Pan Su that his wife is conspiring to remove him from Han Ho's list of potential heirs. Pan Su writes a letter to his father-in-law, Mr. Han, and asks Mr. Bang to deliver it to him. Later that day, Pan Su is walking down the street when one of the girls from his class asks him out. He claims that he doesn't date schoolgirls. Right after, Hyun Jung arrives and asks him the same question. Horrified, Pan Su tells her that he can never date her and walks away. Thank God. At home, Mi Sun also finds out that her daughter wants to date her father. She orders Hyun Jung to stay away from him. At night, Pan Su's rival Yang breaks into the hospital to kill Dong Hyun. Just as he is about to do so, Dong Hyun wakes up out of the blue. Startled, Yang runs away. After waking from the coma, Dong Hyun finds himself in a strange body and runs to his father. Jong Ki thinks he is an intruder and is about to call the police when Pan Su returns home. He explains everything to Jong Ki, who is still skeptical but agrees to believe them because he's a fan of Lindsay Lohan. Following that, Pan Su asks for Dong Hyun's help to solve things with Mi Sun. The two go to her restaurant and pretend to have returned to their own bodies. As Dong Hyun apologizes to her as Pan Su, Yang and his men come to the restaurant. He had followed Dong Hyun from the hospital and is here to kill him once and for all. Dong Hyun cries, begging them for his life, surprising Yang and his group. Pan Su sends Mi Sun and Dong Hyun to another room and himself fights the thugs. But this time, they have come prepared for his attacks. Suddenly, Mi Sun comes out and opens a gas cylinder, threatening to blow up the entire place. Yang and his men have no choice but to run away. Due to the chaos, Mi Sun finds out that the guys were lying earlier. Still, she talks to Dong Hyun as Pan Su and tells him about the hardships she faced because of his absence. The two hug in the end. Somewhere else, Mr. Han has found out that his daughter lied to get her husband in trouble and hide the fact that she has an extramarital affair. Han disowns her and refuses to give her an inheritance. He also asks Pan Su to meet him instantly. Since Pan Su cannot go in front of them himself, Dong Hyun goes in his place with a microchip in his ears. The chip works fine for a few minutes, but when Han asks him about his second family, it turns off. With no one to communicate to, Dong Hyun is alone to make Pan Su's decisions for him. He says that after returning from the hospital, he realized that family is the most important thing in the world. Hence, he is removing himself from the Han Ho group to be with his family. Han respects his decision and lets him go. When Dong Hyun returns to the car, Pan Su hugs him, thanking him for doing the right thing. But their happiness doesn't last long when an enraged Seo Yan hits them with her car. Pan Su is severely injured and has to be taken to the hospital. As he is talking to his family on his deathbed, Dong Hyun falls unconscious. In the following scene, Pan Su is in an operation theater. His surgeon is the same woman who caused the body swap initially. She asks him if he liked the gift and changes him back to normal. Six months later, Dong Hyun, in his own body, returns to school. Everyone respects him and is nice to him. He and Hyun Jung have started dating. Wow, I've never seen a dad wingman that hard. Meanwhile, Pan Su has bought a better place for Mi Sun to run her restaurant. All of them, including John Ki and Mr. Bang, work for her as employees. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.